As you might know, even though I personally developed for KDE Plasma and really love KDE Plasma, for a while I've been using GNOME and of course since I use GNOME I also use GNOME extensions and there are some of them which are truly beautiful. So I want to talk, talk about, a bit about what extension do I actually use daily. So this is the extensions app. So my third of on extensions. Initially, I thought they weren't a very good idea, but with time, for me, they really worked well. Now, usually when you change from one GNOME version to the next one, there is some issues, some extensions stopping working. So long term, uh, this, they might turn out to be not so good. For now, not changing versions, they do work. So it's a bit of a balance because they do work now, they work well, but they might not work when you actually change versions. That said, the most best, bestest extension that there is, is Blur Meshell. And I just love it. Like, look at the background and it's blurred. If I go to the app grid, it's all blurred. And I can understand that GNOME developers don't want this by default. Me personally, I would uh, include it. You could say that this uh, is too expensive in terms of the actual performance that you need to blur everything, but it's not actually true because since you're just displaying a static image that gets blurred, you can actually just blur the image just one time because it's just the background. In KD Plasma, it's a bit different because everything gets blurred live. So if you have like Windows, um, underneath kickoff, they get blurred. In this case, it's just an image, so it has no impact whatsoever on the performance of GNOME. If GNOME is low, it's not because of Blur Meshell, that's for sure, unless it's implemented in a bad way, but hopefully it isn't. Then there is Caffeine, which was recommended to me by at least 10 people since last video, and I want to thank them all because, uh, well, it was actually necessary for me which actually just prevents the computer from sleeping. I gotta say KD Plasma has this button by default in the power uh, system tray applet, but well, it's still nice that you can get it in GNOME as well, even though it's a third party extension instead of being in the system tray, as in my opinion should be. Then we get GNOME 4X UI improvements which I think is a bit necessary to tweak a couple of things like the search, I don't think it's very necessary if you know there is a search, like in here I can search, I know I can search, so there's, there's no reason really to have the search bar even when I'm not using it, so I hide it. I increase the thumbnail scale because otherwise they're a bit small. I mean, just look at here, they're too small. I removed the search button so I can allow myself to have them a bit bigger and then Display Firefox uh, PIP window in the overview. This is enabled by default. I don't know what it does, I'm fine. JS Connect, of course, it's like KD Connect, but for GNOME and I gotta say it's very, very well done. So I'm really happy to have it here. Right now it's not connected, but I did a video showcasing how it works and it works well. Just perfection. <coughs> I, I forgot what this is. What is this? I think it's uh, just a thing. Uh, uh, this is to customize a lot of stuff, I think. I think I like installed it and then forgot about this one. Maybe it was recommended to me from a Telegram user, maybe even from the developer. I don't remember. I will uh, go through it, sorry. Then there is Material Shell, which as you can see is disabled. I tried Material Shell because I really love the concept but it didn't really work for me. Still, if you don't know what Material Shell is, go check it out because it's a super, super interesting concept that really deserves some recognition for at least trying to do something. Oh, come on. At least trying, oh, come on. At least trying to do something innovative. So I really like Material Shell, even though it doesn't work. For then there is reorder workspaces, which allows me to actually reorder workspaces using Alt Up, Alt Down. Uh, let's open something here as well. And you can see by Alt Up and Down, I can switch the position of this workspace, which is nice. And then finally, of course, I do have the sound input and output device chooser. 
which is here to actually choose between the inputs and outputs. Again, I think this should be default and I think it actually it's actually getting uh, defaulted, uh, not this particular extension, but this concept of being able to switch between all of the inputs and outputs directly in the system tray in future GNOME uh, versions. So that's very nice. And then of course, there's all of the Ubuntu stuff. Now I was undecided where, whether to keep the Ubuntu dock or not. Uh, at the end, I decided that I didn't want to because this is more like the GNOME experience, even though I changed a lot of stuff. At the end, it's very GNOME-ish. And I don't feel like an always visible dock is necessary if you're using GNOME as it's meant to be used. So these one, two, three, four, five, six extensions are the extensions that I use. You probably know of more. And if you do, please tell me a couple in the comments so I can learn new one and try out GNOME. Well, let's see as far Let's see how far, sorry, GNOME can get with extensions. Maybe when I get like 25 of them, it just breaks. Who knows? I gotta try that out. Thanks everybody for following. And thanks also everybody who donated to me for actually donating to me. It means that you're putting trust into what I do, which is very nice to hear. <laughs> it allows me to do these things with confidence. So very nice. If you want to donate to me, that also helps me actually develop for Plasma, for KD Plasma. Right now I'm still working on rewriting completely the panel QML containment file. And that's a pretty big task. And the worst enemy is myself because right now I'm trying to rewrite my own code that I wrote like a year ago and it's bad. Anyway, see you tomorrow.